Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and today we're back with yet another random episode challenge. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of this series, then you can check them out, they'll be linked in the description. Basically, we pick a random episode of the anime using a random number generator, and build a team using the first six Pokemon to appear. Then we challenge the strongest trainer in a given game with the battle style on set and no items allowed, including held items. We also match levels with them to make it as even as possible. Today, I wanted to take on Blue, aka Gary, from Fire Red and Leaf Green in the rematch where his team is all into the 70s in levels. So, for that reason, I just set the random number generator to pick a number between 1 and 116 to correspond with an episode of the original series. The number that came out was 11, which if you've seen the thumbnail, you already know what means the episode for today's challenge is Charmander the Stray Pokemon. If you're familiar with the anime at all, then you remember this episode. If not, then here's a quick recap. On their way to Vermilion City, Ash, Misty, and Brock get lost and come across an adorable Charmander laying on a rock. A Charmander! We learn from Ash's Pokedex that if Charmander's flame goes out, it dies? What? That's pretty dark. Anyway, Ash and Misty try to battle the weakened, dying Charmander for some reason. Luckily, Brock intervenes and tells Ash to just throw a Pokeball, but Charmander breaks out. Pikachu figures out that the starter Pokemon is waiting for his trainer to return, so the group moves on. At a nearby Pokemon Center, they overhear just the worst person and learn that it's his Charmander. His name is Damien. He is the devil. Just look at him. He's a pretty cool collection. So, that was Damien. That was Damien's voice. I think we should move on. Brock confronts him, but it's no use. Damien leaves the Pokemon Center, abandoning Charmander to die. Our heroes track him down in the ferocious storm and bring him back to Nurse Joy. She patches him up, but by morning, Charmander has escaped and ventured out in search of his asshole owner, Damien. Seriously, he's just awful. Anyway, while Ash, Misty, and Brock are out searching for Charmander, they get trapped by Team Rocket. Just when it seems that all hope is lost, the episode's titular Pokemon burns up Team Rocket and rescues Pikachu. Coincidentally, Damien is nearby and seeing Charmander's power, decides he'll keep him. When he throws the Pokeball for Charmander to return though, a retaliatory Tail Whip permanently rearranges his face. Good. He deserved that. I think we can all agree he deserved that. The episode ends with Ash adding Charmander to his team, and even though Charmander would have been better off with Brock, seriously, he would have, just makes sense, this is still a great episode. Okay, that wasn't really a quick recap, let's get on to the first six Pokemon to appear. Before running into Charmander, Ash spies two Spearow through his binoculars, so we've got our first two Pokemon. Oh god damn it, Ash. There's nothing but Spiro around here. Yeah, I saw. Thanks for your help. Well, there you have it. Our team for this video will be Spiro, 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 and Spiro. That was six, right? This isn't going to be fun. Let's go catch our team. At least this part was nice and easy. We head east of Pewter City to Route 3 and catch six Spiro. That's it. That's the whole thing. We don't have to leave this patch of grass, and we're all done. We start off our grinding by flying to Route 22 because all three Pokemon in the grass there yield effort values that we want. Rattata gives out one speed EV, Mankey gives out an attack EV, and oh, hey Spiro. Yeah, Spiro also gives a speed EV. I did eventually give up on this route and just accept the fact that not all of my team would have the ideal EVs, but I spent so long in this grass that I did in fact find a shiny. That's how long I was doing this for. That's our third shiny on this channel. Ponyta, Cascoon, and now Rattata. Three pretty great shinies. Anyway, let's get back on track. With Spiro having a base stat total of 262, I believe, if my math is correct, that our team has an average base stat total of 262? That's three less than Lediba's 265. So, not great. Blue's team has an average base stat total of 531, right in between Embor and Infernape. This might be difficult. Well, let's see the team, I guess. To get to this battle, we had to make it past Lorelei, Bruno, Agatha, and Lance. 
Just take a second to picture how those trainers would get on against a team of six Spiro. It wasn't a lot of fun. Anyway, we've made it here and matched Blue's levels, but we haven't gone crazy with TMs. Other than Attract. They sell that at the department store though, so it felt rude not to. Right, here we go. Let's try to beat Blue. Between the first champion battle with Blue and the rematch, he's updated his team slightly. On top of leveling up, he's replaced Rhydon with Tyranitar and Pidgeot with Heracross. It's the bug fighting type that leads off, and with a quad weakness to flying, our team of Spearow have no problems to start. A single fly from Spiro number one squashes the bug without us having to take a hit. Maybe this won't be so hard. Blue's level 72 Tyranitar is out second, and with Thunderbolt in his arsenal, we can't really let him get an attack in. With only one choice that makes sense, we lead off with Attract. The plan is to use Leer as many times as possible until Tyranitar gets hit in and knocks us out. We need to sacrifice Spiro number one to get a free switch into the Spiro with Steel Wing, because nobody else has a chance of taking Tyranitar down. Somehow we managed to get off six Leers in a row before going down to an Aerial Ace. An infatuated Pokemon has a 50-50 chance of attacking, so we got obscenely lucky there. Our Steelwing Spearow comes in, and his attack lands to take out Tyranitar. Next up for Blue is his level 73 Alakazam. With extremely low defense, I know Return will do a lot of damage, but I don't think it will one-shot. Instead of attacking right away, we go for the risky option and use Double Team. This allows the Sandstorm to do a bit more damage before we have to attack. The risk pays off as Alakazam misses Psychic, but Return still doesn't do enough and the Spoon Lover lives on 1 HP. He's not making the same mistake twice and wipes out Spearow number 2 with Psychic. With the Sandstorm continuing to blow though, we only need Switch in Spearow number 3 to finish off Alakazam. Blue's fourth Pokemon is Executor, and at level 73 it's unlikely that one Drill Peck will do enough to take him out. We don't really have a better option though. Drill Peck takes Executor below half health, but a single Psychic knocks out Spearow number 3. One more Drill Peck from Spearow number 4 takes down Executor and makes it a 3 on 2 in our favour. That doesn't last long as one Hyper Beam annihilates Spearow number 4. This shows how important EVs and natures can be. Spearow number 2 outsped Alakazam thanks to maxed out speed EVs and a nature that doesn't hinder speed. Whereas Spearow number 4 couldn't outspeed the significantly slower Gyarados because of her brave nature and mixed EVs. It's unfortunate, but we're down to a 2v2. Spearow number 5 comes in, and Drill Peck along with Sandstorm take Gyarados below half health. Another Hyper Beam takes it down to a 1 on 2 as only our final Spearow remains. I'm not entirely sure why, but I went for Attract when we switched in, but it made no difference. After Gyarados recharges, we take him down with Drill Peck, leaving just Charizard. Everything has come full circle. In the episode we're using, Charmander was attacked by Spearow during the storm, and now his fully evolved form has returned for revenge. Our only hope of making it past Charizard is using a track, so that's how we start off. It comes through on the first turn, and we get off a Drill Peck to deal some damage. Another hit takes Charizard down to about a quarter health, and even though he breaks through the infatuation, his Fire Blast misses Spearow. After more damage from the Sandstorm, Blue reveals he's broken the rules we set out when his Charizard heals with a Citrus Berry. The Berry does just enough as Drill Peck takes Charizard down to 1 HP, but he's immobilized by love and the Sandstorm rages, finishing him off. We've officially beaten Blue using a team of Spearow. This took a whole lot of attempts. We needed to get very lucky to make it past Tyranitar, and on this go we did. Our team of Spearow are inducted into the Hall of Fame, and that's another random episode challenge in the books. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave a like or a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.